I'm a great defender of family and the, the rights of parents and people to, to raise their families as they will and want. This is an interesting case, though. When, when the state, when the employer, uh, when, when the market meets the family who is to win, the rights of a woman to have a child and still retain her job, as it was before she had that child, there was lots of sacrifice involved. I was chatting with a friend just before the show, thinking about if my wife had remained teaching uh, and not taken time off, which is fine. I'm not bitter in any way. Um, now, she'd be retiring about now. She'd be retiring. We'd probably have about $60,000, $65,000 a year given to us for the rest of our lives and all, all our dentist bills paid. I'll never forgive her. Anyway, Andrea Rosek, Institute of Marriage and Family Center in Ottawa. Welcome to you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> now, this case is very interesting because it, particularly conservatives, I think, are very divided, but people in general are very divided on, on the outcome. Give us the background, please. Uh, well, I gather that Fiona Johnstone was uh, hoping to continue to work in a full-time capacity for the public service. Mm -hmm. uh, she worked for the Canadian Border Services, I believe. Um, when she had kids, she found she wasn't able to maintain that full-time status. Her employer told her that uh, she would have to go down to part-time status in order to accommodate um, her needs her desire to care for her children herself. Um, she was not actually putting the kids into daycare of any kind. Shift work, which she was doing, did not allow for her to use daycare of any kind. And so uh, I personally think this is a very interesting case because it brings together all the pieces that are so difficult about balancing work and family life and also state intervention. Mm. Um, we want to see parents caring for their own kids. Uh, we want to see them have the maximum potential to do that, um, to, to, uh, to not have uh, state-run daycares, for example, which don't even serve people like Fiona very well because shift work cannot be accommodated. On the flip side, however, the question in this court case now, which they've ruled uh, basically in Fiona's favor, they've said that um, reasonable accommodations should allow her to be able to work the shifts that she desired in the manner that she desired. The, the problem now is not that the, the accommodations are being made but that they're being made by the courts and that now this decision yeah. is going to influence businesses small and large right. across the country yes now in this case though being working in, in uh, border not security but border checks and frankly I think a lot of this is totally redundant by the way because a number of times that I I've heard Portuguese and Scottish grandmothers interrogated by someone sitting there you know why are you coming here and all this waste of time but it does involve apparently shift work and hours that are not always pleasant because obviously the airport, for example, um, is open most of the day. She didn't want to do that. She was then told, well, that's going to be difficult, so you'll have to be part time. I want someone to raise their children, but that doesn't mean other people have to look after you. Do we know if, she, if there is a, a father, a partner, a husband on the scene? I don't know that. I do know that she wanted to have family. She wanted to make family arrangements, that family would be caring for her kids, mm. um, which I think is admirable. And if she's going to great lengths to make that happen so that family can care for her kids and she can be there on her off days, I actually have no problem with that. And I really hope that it, within the capacity of businesses, whatever is reasonable, we should be accommodating parents um, to be able to do flex time or to be able to work from home. Well, but, um, but how much? I mean, let's talk about this because, f first of all, in, in most places of employer, you, you know your colleagues pretty well and people will, will try and compromise. So I'll take your shift, you take mine. I understand you just had a child. People get along with their colleagues. You know, if that can't happen, or sometimes it can't, and this is, this is obviously the public sector, most uh, employers at a mid-level, again, will try and help you out. They're not there to be unpleasant. Above them, they won't even know who you are. But we don't know all of the context there. But let's take, after this court decision, let's say it's someone with three or four employees. They're probably working with their employees. They're not making huge amounts of money, but they're, 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 they're the backbone, the bedrock of our society. If someone says, well, I've decided to have a child, good for you, but now I also want you to take me back at the same wage, even though I can't do what you want me to do and I couldn't do previously, that seems a bit unfair. Well, I agree, Michael, I do. And I think that this is the problem is we, we need to come to the reasonable accommodations, but there is going to be very little agreement on what reasonable is. And so the private sector, um, there's there's different scenarios here. She worked for the public sector. Yeah. Um, that's a very large employer. They have unlimited um, taxpayer dollars and they can... Uh, they can afford these sorts of court cases and then accommodate accordingly. Or, or one could argue they can't because our taxes are going to rise. Um, yeah. There's always ramifications of every decision. But the problem is uh, often for the private sector employers that have smaller, um, they have smaller 
uh, groups of, of employees, and it makes it much more difficult to make special accommodations. I still think, though, ultimately, um, when it's not happening within the court uh, system, when it's done privately, we can come to reasonable accommodations that allow women and men to, um, to work uh, and also take care of their own kids. Kids are not a part-time job, by the way, which I think we're rapidly coming to that place in our society where people think they can continue their working lives in exactly the same way as prior to having children. They're a full-time job. There are many, many, many different sacrifices made on the parts of parents, and we need to find the right balance in recognizing that versus yeah. um, understanding that those sacrifices will be made by parents because they love their kids. Right. I, I think that's very well put because it isn't life as usual. And anyone thinks that it, it's merely like, I don't know, taking up a hobby or something, it isn't. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge commitment. And there are some people who, of course, have to have two incomes. But I need to say this. The number of times I, I drive past the daycare and, and my old uh, RAV4 can't quite get past the BMW because the parents have parked it there. There are people who insist on the income they had before children, even though they don't need the second income. And I, I, I really begrudge the idea that employers should have to compromise or I should have to pay high taxes for, for socialized daycare because they simply still want their, their third vacation every year. Daycares are often, um, the, state, the, the state pours money into daycares, by the way, and this is often done at the expense of single parents. It's done at the expense of shift workers. Yeah. And it's done at the expense of parents who go to great, great lengths, making great sacrifices so that they don't have to use daycares. And if we're going to talk about equity, we don't have it right now in the system whatsoever because we pour state monies into daycares rather than giving it to parents. We can argue about whether that's the right way to use state uh, state tax dollars as yeah. well. But personally, um, I, if I were going to get a little bit off topic from the issue at hand, the idea of funding daycares to quote unquote help families is, is not actually helping yeah. families at all. You know, I've got to end with this. Years ago on radio, I was talking about this subject and I had a woman telephone and say she was very happy because she, she put her children in daycare so she could find the time to run her own daycare. And I said, well, wouldn't it be easier just to raise the children yourself or even in your own daycare? And she said, no, they're better socialized elsewhere, which I suppose says it all. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much.